Streaming can take a toll on your PC's performance, making your system run slower, games run at lower FPS, and your stream drop frames and look choppy. But there's some simple fixes you can do to help, so let me show you how. My name is Chris, this is Coalition Gaming, and today I'll be your stream technician. Real quick, if you're new around here and are into tech, PC, hardware, gaming, stream tips, and tutorials, you're in the right place. Hit that subscribe button and that bell so you don't miss a single upload. Also, I stream to Twitch every Friday at 8 p.m. Pacific at twitch.tv slash coalition gaming crew. So if you want to talk stream tips or tech or anything, feel free to stop by and drop a follow. Anyways, let's get to the video. Whether you are a single PC streamer or a dual PC streamer or something crazier, Maintaining performance is of utmost importance. Making sure your game's FPS stays high, you don't drop frames, or your PC just doesn't bog down can be a problem uh, that you end up chasing forever. Let's get into what exactly you need to do. And I'll show you how to do that down at the desktop. Let's do it. So here we are at the desktop and uh, let's go over some of the things that you need to do to make sure that your stream runs as good as possible. The first thing that I always suggest is going through all your scenes and all your sources and uh, just basically shutting down all sources when they're not in use. That's mostly important for media sources, browser sources, camera sources, uh, image sources, stuff like that. So let's see, I have a couple of browser sources here on this scene, I have event list. If I double click it or go into properties, you can see right here, shut down source when not visible. Make sure that's checked. The thing is, if you don't check these and you have a bunch of browser sources, even if you change scenes away from where you're using those, it's still running in the background using up resources. And any alerts that are on there can also echo through the different scenes and you'll hear it multiple times for one alert. It's massively resource heavy and it could be very distracting. So you want shut down source when not visible, turn on on every browser source you can possibly find in all of your stream setup. I have it on there, Twitch alerts, I have it on there as you can see, shut down source when not visible. Um, I have my whole starting scenes thing. This is a local asset, so it's not a browser source. It's an image source. And if I go here, look at that. Close file when inactive. Or in other words, shut down source when not visible. Same thing, and that's checked there as well. If I go over to my main gaming scene, here I am in PUBG. And as you can see, I have a lot more sources here. Twitch alerts, same thing. Shut down source when not visible is checked. Um, I have... My Discord voice chat browser source, shutdown source when not visible is checked. My camera frame, 4.3, close file when inactive. And this even applies to camera sources, like I mentioned. Here's my main camera. And if I look at it right here, here's this checkbox, deactivate when not showing. And here's, here's another thing with that, is if I go to, like, let's say this webcam, my overhead webcam, you can see me there, uh, deactivate when not showing. Most webcams have a little light on them that will show you when they're turned on. And this isn't used in this scene. And so if I pull it up like this, it will turn it on and I can see a light on. I check that box that says deactivate when not showing and then I press OK. And now the light on that webcam has turned off. And now that I know that it's off, it's not using any resources. That's really what's most important for maintaining stream performance. You want to do that for every source you possibly can, whether that be an image, whether that be a browser source, a camera source, a media source. There's something like that that exists in all those. As you, as you can see, there was shutdown source when not visible, deactivate when not showing, uh, close when inactive. And I believe for image sources, it's uh, it's uh, unload image when not in use, something like that. Check the boxes for all that stuff and you have a much better time. Now that we're here on the gaming scene that you can see PUBG running there, um, one thing I really want to focus on if you're capturing any game to stream, you want to be trying to use the game capture source as much as possible. So you see here there's game capture. Display capture is an alternative, but it's a last resort because it's not as efficient. Game capture is far more efficient. So let me show you. I have PUBG right here. 
and I do I like to do capture specific window and then I select the window player unknowns battlegrounds right there and you're going to have a better time if you're using game capture source versus display capture source so try to use that if you can but while you're here there is something else and this applies for games that capture at really high frame rate if you're running a game and you're getting three four hundred fps let's say csgo rainbow six siege or anything like that it can actually cause a problem in OBS and cause the stream to look choppy. The audience's experience is very important when it comes to streaming. So you want to make sure that you're optimizing for their experience as well as your own. And in the game capture properties, there's a checkbox right here that says limit capture frame rate. What that does, I believe, don't quote me on this one though, is that I believe instead of cap trying to capture every frame of, uh, of the game that you're playing, it will capture every other frame. So if you're running your game and you're getting 300 fps and obs is stuck trying to capture three 400 fps it might struggle a little bit but doing this essentially cuts that in half and so it's trying to capture 150 fps instead of 300 for example and it's a little easier on it less resource intensive what this ends up doing is it ends up smoothing out a lot of streams that that play at high frame rate so if that fits what you're doing Make sure you're checking that box. And if you're having a laggy game capture, it doesn't hurt to try that either. Now I have OBS open for a reason. And like I mentioned, optimizing for the audience's experience as well as your own is very important when it comes to streaming. So one thing you wanna do to make sure that everybody is having a good time and that OBS has enough resources to capture your games and, and stream them properly. And don't, don't scoff at this. Yeah, you're going to want to cap your FPS. <laughs> no, no, it's, all, it's okay. Trust me. Believe me here. In-game FPS cap, I have set to 120. So like I mentioned earlier, OBS can sometimes struggle with capturing games that run at crazy high frame rates. It can also struggle when you're playing a game that demands so much of your GPU that there aren't a lot of resources, GPU resources left to run OBS as well. And when that happens, OBS drops frames. In order to free up graphics card resources, you want to cap FPS. So it leaves at least a little bit left over for OBS to run. I mean, OBS is compiling an image on screen and then shrinking that, or, well, flattening that down essentially and then streaming it out. So OBS needs a little bit of graphics power. And if your game is using all of your graphics power, there's nothing left for OBS and OBS is going to run like poop and your stream will look like poop. What you want to do is you cap your FPS. Ideally, some factor of 60 is fine. If you have a high refresh rate screen and you set your cap to 120, it's still going to look smooth as butter because you're still seeing every frame at every refresh of the screen and that's fine and if you're really like all about the audience's experience you can even capture at uh, set your cap to 60 fps you'll still have a perfectly playable experience and you will guarantee that obs always captures everything perfectly fine now back in obs you guys can clearly see i have a lot of sources here but one thing you want to do is you want to minimize how many browser sources you're using. In this scene, I have two browser sources that I that are my primary ones. I have a, a few extras, but they don't I can delete them because they're not really active. They're not really being used too much. But the two primary browsers I have are my event list and my Twitch alerts. And that's it. Minimizing how many browser sources you use in any of your scenes throughout any of your stream is key to making sure that you have the best stream performance that you can. Browser sources are essentially opening a browser tab in the background that you can't see. So it's using the same amount of resources as browser tabs. And as you guys have seen with Google Chrome and Mozilla Firefox and all sorts of stuff, when you have a ton of tabs open, it's using up a ton of resources and that can cost performance. Speaking of browser tabs, you want to minimize how many browser tabs you have open. So you can see here, I have a bunch of open right here, and that's not really all that many, but you know, have the minimum that you need. Your Twitch, your YouTube dashboard, maybe YouTube for music or Spotify or something like that. And I mean, that's it. Two or three tabs to have your bare, ne your bare necessities that you need to run your stream and you should be fine. And uh, if you have more than that open, you could be costing yourself some performance. So minimize, minimize, minimize. And, not, and I don't mean minimize the tab, like click the little line. I mean, try to keep as little as possible open as you can. 
And along that topic, you also want to minimize how many background applications you have open. So you can see down here in my tray, there's a bunch of stuff here. I have something for RGB. Most people are going to have RGB stuff running. If you have Adobe Premiere running in your background, close that. Uh, I have a, something for my print wireless printer. Yeah, you want to turn that off as well. Everything that's here that isn't needed for your stream, RGB software included, um, turn it off if you want to maximize your stream performance, If you, especially if you don't have the highest end of rigs. You'd be surprised how much just closing a bunch of resources, resource heavy stuff in the background can help maintain your stream performance. A good example as well is if you have Origin, Steam, Battle.net, uh, Bethesda Launcher, Epic Launcher, all that sort of stuff. And you don't need all of that open at once, man. You really don't. If you have, if you're playing a game and it's in one of those launchers, close all the other launchers. They use resources and without even knowing it, they can start downloading an update in the background and bork your upload and make your stream all choppy. So it's important on multiple, for multiple reasons to close any other launchers other than the one you're actively using. Now, as you can see, I don't have too much going on in my overlays. In my stream starting screen, it, it's an animated overlay, sure, but it's one source and it's local to the computer. It's not a browser source. Minimizing animated overlays is also very important. I have a really strong system, so I'm gonna get away with a few, like one or two. I don't really have that many um, that are animated. But if you're on a mid-range system or a low-end system, you wanna have static assets as much as possible. Or or if you just really want the most performance out of your game, if you're single PC streaming, all static assets and you will have a better time. Static overlays, static alerts, static webcam frames, all that sort of stuff. Don't use animated stuff if you want to maintain the best performance. And lastly, this is a really important one too, by the way. If you're on Windows 10, hardware accelerated graphic scheduling or HAGS isn't fully working right still um, I've had to switch off of using that and running OBS as admin to get the best results what this will do is it will make sure that OBS gets the necessary GPU resources in order to run properly and uh, and even if you load a game up that's incredibly resource or GPU heavy and well you still might run into issues this is the best way to make sure that OBS gets what it's need to run right gets what it needs to run right you can always just, you know, go to OBS and right click it and run as administrator, or you can go to the shortcut, go to the properties of it and go into uh, compat, let's see, advanced on this screen for run as administrator. So then anytime you click it, it will prompt you to do it. Or you can go directly to the executable open file location, right click on it, click properties. And then again, advanced, uh, actually not there. It's under compatibility, change settings for all user, and then run this program as administrator so that anytime that you run it it will ask you to run as administrator and then you'll be good to go because it's really easy to forget to right click and run as administrator every time just check that box and it will run like that every time because it asks you every time now if you're on windows 11 apparently and this is like according to epos vox and other people um, hardware accelerated graphics scheduling works better and you don't need to run OBS as admin. So to find that, what I'd like to do, and this is going to apply for Windows 11 or Windows 10, is hit your Windows search, type graphics, and there it is, hardware accelerated GPU scheduling or HAGS. In Windows 11, turn that on. You can run OBS normally and you should be good to go. All right, let's go ahead and get back up to the main camera. Covering the basics of stream optimization, in my opinion, is something that gets overlooked too easily. People seem to think that there must be some magical doctoring that must be done to maximize streaming performance, but when it comes down to it, it's just a matter of remembering to cross your T's and dot your I's. Got other tips you'd like me to talk about? Come to my streams and let's talk. I stream every Friday at 8 p.m. Pacific at twitch.tv slash coalition gaming crew or drop a comment down below and let's talk stream tips. Anyways, I hope you guys found this video useful, entertaining, or otherwise informative. If you like this video, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button and that bell so you don't miss a single upload. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye.